tonight I like to talk about the frame. Frame. Uh, some years ago, I read a book called Frame, written by Dr. Choi in Seoul National University, like Harvard Street, Harvard or Cambridge in Korea, number one. Uh, known as best college. The psychology professor, okay, that gave me a lot of good ideas. Here I show you a letter. How do you read this letter? No, one, one. You can say, uh, huh? one, three, B, 13, well, some even say the Chinese, if we show mountain, this means mountain, okay? Of course, many people are confused about this letter. However, if I show this letter in order with the, the other number, numbers of framed, <laughs> like to see then you would definitely read it as the number 13, right? No doubt. But if I framed it with alphabet order, like this, how do you read this? Right. How come sometimes mountain 13, sometimes B? You already know some students, uh, key students particularly know what I mean, okay? Then naturally you would read it as the letter B. The reason is because of the frames, because of what surrounds it. We know this letter has not changed its position or shape, always same shape and the same spot, but it depends on the surroundings, the frame so called. We know this letter has not changed its position or shape. This is called the frame in psychology. We can interpret this frame as prejudice or viewpoint. Same meaning. What I mean is when we look at the reality outside, we tend to interpret it differently, depending on our prejudice or our viewpoint. You understand what I mean? Yes, sir. For example, suppose somebody is walking into your office to talk with you, someone you have never met before. He or she could be a Korean, black, white, or Mexican. Often we judge others according to their race. And according to our viewpoint, we then tend to already judge whether that person is arrogant or unreliable or lazy. We already decide how to talk and how to answer. Sometimes we even already determine the result of our conversation. But if we behave like this, we cannot truly communicate. It is the same between parents and children. Parents had a lead the conversation according to their viewpoint, and they often already determine what to say and how to reprimand, even before listening to their ch children. Even between husband and wife, it is pretty much the same. But we know today this type of problem is very serious between religious groups. Don't blame me because I'm t using this kind of word, religious groups. Religion is the basic for our psychology or uh, uh, philosophy, our life. According to this history, uh, just a second between religious groups. A famous French philosopher, Jean-Jacques Rousseau, pointed out this problem. 
According to his suggestion, parents or leaders should not educate very young children about just one particular faith in a cramming way. You know what it means? Cramming way. Because they might lose a good opportunity to learn new things and they may refuse to accept other educational opportunities in the future. You know, they already frame from early childhood. The point that we should understand is the more we grow physically and intellectually, the more we must abandon and destroy our prejudice and change our viewpoint. Generally speaking, a negative person will always blame others or the, situ uh, or the situation for their misfortune. So they believe the situation or the environment determines our fate. However, a positive person has a different viewpoint about the situation. In other words, the way we interpret the situation controls our fate, not the situation itself. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Sure. You know, as I lectured in David A. Key class, Lao Tzu, his book, Tao Te Ching, clearly explains this type of philosophy. You know, don't be caught by the frame. You first make your frame. Anybody doesn't fit to your frame, you blame. You uh, do not want to associate. You are different. So that Lao Tzu suggests through that book, natural, be natural. So that we are not supposed to build up standard. What's the standard? I like to question. You know, generally, crane is beautiful bird. Bird, right? Sure. But crane has long leg. Changsu, fourth century Chinese philosopher, right after Lao Tzu, very famous Taoist, he said, simply because the legs of the crane is longer than average birds, should we cut the leg? There was a man who blamed the short of people, and you know, on TV in Korea a few years ago. He said, under six, six foot, six feet, six feet, smaller than six feet, they are losers. So people started thinking, I'm five foot 11, five foot 10, five foot six, five foot seven. So they felt inferiority complex. That's a standard, understand? Sure. That's sure. that man's standard, you don't have to try to fit to that frame. You have to be your own. The small what? Tall what? I'm five or six, I'm generally average short, but I'm taller than smaller people. <laughs> I'm much taller than midget. <laughs> so, be confident the way you are Fine, okay? In case you are concerned about the frame, I should fit to the frame of the society of other people, then you will have a headache. <coughs> Former British Prime Minister Winston Churchill said, the pessimist sees difficulty in every opportunity. But the optimist sees the opportunity in every difficulty. It depends on frame. I would like to show you one more picture. <coughs> can you see? Can you see? Sure, sir. A, one, two, okay. Two different pictures. Which is center circle? Which one? Bigger than the other? Huh? Don't be, don't hesitate. 
I draw something not right. <laughs> but generally speaking, eight, more than 80% of people answer left side, eh, the inner circle, center circle is much bigger than the other. But this is exactly the same size. It depends on the surroundings, the frame, frame. You understand what I mean? Yes, Among these two, as I asked uh, which circle is bigger than the other, many people say figure A is bigger, but actually both circles are the same size. The only difference is the frame. Some, time, some years ago, a 17-year-old high school student joined my daybreak key meditation class along with his mother. He had a unique hairstyle. Many of my students at the time were so much concerned about him, thinking he was a troublemaker because his, his hairstyle was a mohawk. Is it called mohawk? Yes, mohawk. Nowadays, they accept, but about 10 years ago, 15 years ago, they always believed that such young people are tough troublemaker or drug addict or drinking a lot. <laughs> but later we happened to find out that the young man was waiting to begin his college life at Yale University with a full scholarship. Frame, frame, all right? Don't be prejudiced. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to question you. No matter, no matter what you do or what your job is, are you proud of your position? Do you take pride in feeling that you are doing your best and helping others? In other words, I don't know the word the proper calling, called my mission, this is my duty. Sure. For example, Master Zhang, I need money, so I want, I want to teach this students because I want to earn money. Then I get tired, very not fun at all. But I want to help. This is my mission. I'm here to help my students. Then I feel animated, always smiling and happy. You know what I mean, right? Yeah. You know, uh, street cleaner some years ago, street cleaner, hired by city government. They always happily cleaning streets, sweeping, vacuuming, you know. One young man who had a wonderful job, money-wise, he came up to the street cleaner. You know that street cleaner, not as much salary, right? Not much money. But this young man, maybe three, four times more. But how come this street cleaner was happy all the time and questioned it? What are you doing? This street cleaner said, I am cleaning a corner of earth. You understand what I mean? Sir, it, yeah. I don't know if it is the right expression. Earth, okay. Yes, I'm doing for this mankind, so this young man understood what he meant. This man, a street cleaner, was very happy. A man was passing a place where three stone masons were working. He asked the first mason what he was doing. The mason replied angrily, can't you see what I'm doing? He was mean and unhappy. Then he questioned the second mason, and the second mason replied sharply, I need money to survive. I must support my family. I need mortgage payment or gasoline, food, whatever. Just simply job, job. So man, the man moved on to the, on to the third man, who was happily humming a song. He asked him, the same question. The third mason smiled and with a happy and pleasant tone, he said, 
I'm cutting stones, these stones will be the cornerstone and walls of a new church. I imagine that lots of people will come and worship here after I build these walls. I'm so happy and proud to imagine this. You know what I mean, right? Sure. So if you go to work in order to earn money to support your family, you will not become happy. This is what I have to do. Am I a very useful, precious person for this world, this mankind? It depends on frame. Ladies and gentlemen, the secret of happiness comes from a different viewpoint or frame. You know, uh, I, I often quote scriptures in the Bible, but other sacred books, same thing. You know, Jesus said, Matthew chapter 4, verse 17, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I interpreted right away. Aha, this is it. This is it. Here, repent means metanoia in Greek. Metanoia means change your habit, your frame, your pattern. Paradigm, understand? Doesn't mean you may be stalled when you were young, a chewing gum from your uncle's you know, shop, so you feel guilty. You know. Of course, that includes, but Jesus didn't mean that. Your, uh, how can I say in English, uh, pre existing conditions or lifestyle. Same kind of thought over and over. Understand? Sure. You don't want to change it because of frame. Frame. So, uh, metanoia, change your habit, your lifestyle, paradigms, frame. The difference of frame will determine the quality of your life. If we wish to have happier, and more successful life, you know, naturally, we have to change our viewpoint. For example, you stand up, please. Look over there. Look over there. Okay. Sir. You come here. You stand right here. Where is this podium located? It's in front of me, sir. Front. How about you? Behind But this Paul, this podium? Yes, sir. Okay. Same spot. Same spot. Sit down. Sir. But how come he says behind, the other person front? Somebody might say, my side. This is why they have conflict, they fight. That's frame, okay? You have to understand this podium's location never changed the same spot. So, you have confidence, you grow up, you become more matured. That should mean that you have a different viewpoint. Understand? Yes, sir. Don't build up your own frame. Don't try to other people to fit to your frame. Destroy the frames. The successful people, these scholars or business people, they are the people who never had a frame. Okay? So let's get rid of a frame. Of course, not so easy job. You have to keep on trying to get rid of this, this problem. Thank you. <laughs>